we have got something extremely special today. This is a Ferrari GTO. It's a race car, but it's a street car. And they make beautifully sculpted cars. No it kidding. No it's and works of art. I mean, it, they're made by artists. Dude, this thing is gorgeous. It is crazy. But what if I want this damn thing for my YouTube channel? You want it, of course. It's out. <laughs> okay. <laughs> this thing is badass, man. I like this thing. It is cool. And it's a, and it's a convertible, which is Yes. Awesome. It's your good buddy 650 e here, and welcome to another episode of Supercar Shopping Mondays at Marshall. We're here at Marshall Goldman Sales and Leasing in the Cleveland area, and we're going to talk about some amazing supercars today. Not these beautiful examples of Mercedes Benzes, but a very special uh, Ferrari that my good buddy Arthur is going to tell us about. And if you're new to the channel, make sure you click that subscribe button. And if you're already a subscriber, tap that bell so that you can be notified when I upload new content. Believe my good buddy Arthur's back in this room, they tell me. And he has a very special Ferrari for us to check out. It's not this beautiful California here, which is gorgeous in its own right, but it supposedly is something else. Let's see. You know how to open this thing. I got this, the secret knock. Wow, the secret knock and everything. <laughs> yeah, what's, what's up, man? On, hey, man, how are you, Arthur? Oh, good. What a cool door. Yeah, right? Yeah. Kind of keep, keep people away from looking at some of the stuff. Wow, awesome room, too. Yeah, photo room. Nice. So we have got something extremely special today. Uh-oh. Um, and in the Ferrari world, it's, you know... It, Anytime you look at Ferraris, you look at the numbers produced, you know, mm -hmm. and this isn't the lowest number produced car, but truly one of my favorites. So this car was designed to compete uh, in the Group wow. B uh, races, which really never happened. So oh. when doing that, car manufacturers have to produce so many road going cars. Yes. 200, I believe. Uh, so this is a Ferrari GTO, wow. Grand Turismo, and I'm not going to even hack up what the O stands for. <laughs> Omologato. Yeah, it's Italian, so it's easy to hack up. Right. Yeah, but there it is. The beautiful GTO next to the prancing horse. Prancing horse. So this was the predecessor to many cars. And I won't say it's a predecessor to the F40, but definitely has a lot of F40 characteristics. So this is a twin turbo V8. No way. Uh, which in 1985 was a big deal. Yeah. Um, a really big deal. Um, and you can see from inside of the cockpit that, you know, everything is very sparse. Crank windows, as you noticed. Oh, oh, yes. Um, somebody did install a CD player inside of it. Um, oh. And originally, these cars in '85, you could have could have optioned an actual CD player, which for '85 was pretty high technology. No, no kidding. Um, you couldn't get the car in any other color than red. Okay. Uh, so this was the only option you got. Is this called a Ferrari red? Rosa Corsa. Rosa Corsa. Rosa Corsa. We'll, we'll find out when we open up the front where the badge is at. Okay. Um, but it's definitely Rosa. So inside you'll see a pretty amazing setup. So you have yeah. your, your, your intercooler sticking up top. You have your exposed turbos to each side. Uh, unconventionally, you only have one wastegate. Uh, most twin turbo cars would have a wastegate for each turbo. Okay. Um, this one has one, one huge wastegate, um, which I'm sure that there is a, a reason behind the Ferrari craziness on why it has that. But I, I do yes. not have the answer to that. Okay. Um, you have your oil filter right up top, which is kind of cool. Huge oil filter. Massive oil filter. You know, your engine is, of course, pushed forward, mm -hmm. um, trying to get that weight 50-50 into the middle, trying to get the weight distribution as, as much as they could because this car was... This car was made to race. Um, you know, they made the road going cars. And the crazy thing is, is because the Group B never happened, I believe it was 272 or 275 cars were made. Uh, all of them stayed road going cars. So what you would do is you would buy one of these to compete in Group B, and then you would just tear it apart inside, put a little cage inside of it, put racing, put racing wheels, even though these are three-piece racing wheels from the factory. Yeah. Um, you would tear it down and make it a race car. Um, and because that never happened, again, 
you know, we never saw these things get turned into race cars, which I think is cool. Yeah. So they came from the 308 generation. And just more business. Oh. Even carpets. Um, everything was, was for weight. So you have all of your, you did get a spare tire, I imagine. Now. It's a full size, actually. Uh, well, no, no, it's a, it, it's a space saver. Okay. Um, but you, you know, everything was, was done so that there was really no excess when you added it. Wow. What are these fans up here used to cool? Radiator. That's your, that's your radiator right there. Okay. And then over here, we've got its name plate, and its color is... Rosa Corsa. People don't know if with Ferraris, all Ferraris have this placard on them. Okay. At least most will, should have the placard on them. Okay. Uh, and that will tell you what color it is. Wow. I like the little baggie they put over that to protect. It's kind of neat. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's there to protect things. Normally in a normal road going car where weight isn't an issue, you know, you would have your carpet or carpeting or cardboard yes. or whatever, whatever they would do up there. Um, another cool feature of this car, looking at it, I hate closing these things. Why? There because go. they're fiberglass and I don't want to crack a yeah. over a million dollar car. <laughs> wow. Um, so your fenders, I don't know if the viewers can see it, the fenders on these things are just massive and stuck out. Yes, I see that. Um, and again, that was to, was to accommodate a larger tire for the front and have a larger front track. Um, everything was done with racing in mind from all the duct work you see in the back. Everything is everything serves a purpose. Why the four fog lights? So. I'm sure endurance racing, 24 hour Le Mans? I'm sure you could say endurance <laughs> racing. I'm sure that there is definitely a reason for it. Yeah. I won't answer the reason for it because okay. I don't know. I'll yes. tell the YouTube world that I do not know something. That's two things that I don't know. We can continue a tally <laughs> on things that Arthur doesn't know. They're going to keep a tab. Trust me. That's Somebody's going to mention I'm, that. Okay. I'm fine with that. I'm good with critique. <laughs> <laughs> um, but you had asked earlier on other Ferraris, you know, about the Pina Farina. Yes. Blackboard. So this is a design house that car manufacturers hire to design vehicles. Okay. Um, so they've designed for Dodge, they've designed for Ferrari, they've designed for Maserati. Of course, are most well known for Ferrari and Maserati. Okay. Um, and they make beautifully sculpted cars. No as, as kidding. Most Ferraris are works of art. Well, I mean, it, they're made by artists. I'm trying to think of what Dodge they might have uh, helped out the design. So I have to for. think it's when, <laughs> when Maserati I believe it was Dodge that bought Maserati, and again, my, 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 my history is going to crack me on that one, but yeah. um, I, I want to say uh, it was when Iacocca was with I remember Chrysler, that. I believe I remember Iacocca that. acquired um, Maserati, and I want to say that's when Fiat bought them from Iacocca, yeah. I, I could be completely wrong, but you know, you had that, you had those weird years of like Maseratis that looked like Dodges, yes. um, but they were Pina Farina designed, okay. um, which was, you know, was cool, you know, I mean, it's yeah. a, a very, very unique, the, the founder died, but I believe both of his... I believe both his grandsons still run it, if I'm correct by that. Um, but, wow. You know, how awesome is it that you can design a car so beautiful yet so functional? Yes. I mean, everything is functioning. A lot of people will notice these from something very similar, which would be the TDF. But it is just a, uh, it's a unique opportunity to it be is. able to walk into a room and see one of 272 cars in the world. Produced for the world. Wow. Um, and we've had two of them. Uh, the first one we couldn't show you because it went to a, a, a private private pri private buyer uh, but this one is uh it's going to be for sale um, if it makes it to the if it makes it to the website usually mm -hmm. these cars seem to exit here pretty quickly but uh what's is, uh what's the asking price going to be it's going to be over a million we haven't really wow. decided but it'll it'll be over a million dollar car which you know you, you get jaded in this world because a million dollars isn't that much anymore when it comes to really unique automobiles yeah you know i mean they just really does it even on newer automobiles i mean look at some of the cars that are coming out now that you know you see on the road that are close to a million yes um, 918 spiders even though they didn't cost a million new now are close to a million if not over a million dollars um you know you just have so many cars out there now that a million dollars just doesn't seem like it cracks the threshold that hard anymore you know, yeah it's like everybody's pushing the barriers in the supercar world when it comes to price you know the even the chiron now it just doesn't seem it doesn't seem that expensive even though it is very expensive yes. that's a lot of money to spend on a car you know th then you, you could have a you know the high runs and everything else that starts up behind it and then you have special versions of those you have the mansory you have the mansory company that makes the mansory uh, bugattis which are just ridiculous if you've never looked at mansory before not that i'm plugging them but they have their own design for carbon fiber weave the weave on their carbon fiber is unique wow. to them and they did i believe royalty royalty exotics i think they're out of Vegas, mm -hmm. uh, they've got their own YouTube channel. Uh, he has a Manzuri uh, Bugatti uh, Veyron, and the uh, the 
the checking, I, I, I call it, or the pattern, the carbon fiber, is just worldly. I mean, it, wow. it looks like a huge checks with rounded sides. It's, yeah. Mansory is just amazing. And again, extremely expensive, extremely exclusive. Yes. But um, beautiful. And just like this. I mean, it's, mm -hmm. it's gorgeous. You know, some things you see on this, you just, it's a race car. But it's a street car. So, you know, it, it goes back to, I think, the reason why a lot of our viewers, including myself, uh, love the Porsche GT3s. Because it's a race car, but yes. it's a street car. Mm -hmm. So you get the best of both worlds. It's a streetable race car. Which in the bike world is cool, too, because you have, like, the, the Ducati that you're getting ready to, to take delivery of. Yes, yeah, the V4R. Like you, like you were telling me. I mean, it's a, people are going to use it on the track. It's what it's for. It's a track bike, but yet you can use it on the road too. Indeed. Which makes it awesome. You know, I mean, how Dual cool purpose. is it to be able to yeah, drive down the road in a race car? Yeah, that's the reason why I didn't get this bike called the uh, BMW HP4 Race, because it's only a track bike. Right. And it's $80,000. It's like, I don't do enough track days to justify that. Well, and you can't drive it on the street. And to me, right. that's, that's the fun. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, I think the fun is being able to drive it on the street. You know, I mean, it, it's just... The, the beauty and the vehicles, I and mean, even in the motorcycles. I mean, it's just all striking to think that I can get in this car and start it up and take it on the street. Yet Are you actually going to start it? It's a racetrack. We may be able to get that to happen. Okay. We may be able to get that to happen. All right. Like, I believe the belt service was done on this car. These cars require uh, belt changes, like cam belts. Okay. Um, they need done every, I believe it's three or five years. And if a cam belt snaps, it's an interference motor, which yeah. means... Bing, bang, kaboom, yeah. and uh, Eve and Arthur are going to be on the run. So you, <laughs> you two viewers will, 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 will see us doing O.J. Simpson down, uh, down, 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 yeah, down 76. Do you have a Bronco here we oh, can use for that? I'll be hiding in the back of the cover over my head. Nice. Well, this is a beautiful vehicle indeed. It is. It, yeah. It's definitely something I thought, I thought the viewers wanted to see. Mm -hmm. um, very, very rare you get to see them, and especially very rare for, for you and I to be able to put our hands on them. You yes. know, look at them, touch them, appreciate them. Um, I enjoyed it thoroughly. It's, it's just beautiful. But we probably should get back to looking at cars that... That I can probably afford. Well, we're going to make more sense right. because if you did, yeah. if, I think if you, uh, if you started doing Smackdowns in a, in a GTO, uh, I think you'd probably have some very angry Ferrari owners that would probably hunt you down. Yes. <laughs> I wouldn't be one of them because I think it would be cool. <laughs> but I'm sure the purists out there, would, 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 their skin would crawl and would have massive issues. <laughs> Now we're in a different location. We're back in the private stock room, and uh, we just happened to walk back past the Magnum PI car, huh? 308. Mm-hmm. Amazing and uh, cool. And, you know, you can kind of see how the 288 yes. GTO shares a little bit, like this right here. Shares a little bit. Does it have the crazy Funny. fog lights, does four not, of them? It does not have crazy <laughs> okay. fog lights or big uh -huh. fenders. Right, yeah, this thing looks tiny compared to the GTO. It's crazy. It's crazy. The wheels look super small, too. The wheels look super small. Everything looks much different. The interior looks much more dated. Yeah. Um, which, you know, this isn't, because this is, this is a 1979, so I mean, it should. What's up with that crazy door handle? Isn't that crazy? <laughs> It's like, I, I want to think that they like put it there. Like Right. I want to think it's either an afterthought or they put it there mm -hmm. so you didn't have an ugly door handle down here. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. Totally different interior. This one looks like it has a CD player also, huh? Added. Okay. And this is a Targa, so the, the top lifts off. Mm-hmm. Cool. You can see in the back engine bay area that... Again, very different back here than the other. No twin turbos. No twin turbos. Your engine sense sits this way instead of this way. So yep. it's transverse or not longitudinal. Okay. And, uh, well, the oil filter still looks huge. The oil filter still massive. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, this is not what you brought us back here to see, but we no. just happened to walk past. Thanks no. for showing it. Absolutely. But I think somebody did want to see the 16M last, last week. We could definitely take a peek at that. Oh, sure. Which is a very special Ferrari, too. But I think we're getting away from the core subject of, of you buying the car. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but it is raining and sleeting. Uh, I was just going to so. say, we have all winter to right. deal with that so and figure that out. I don't think the excitement is there to, uh, yeah. to, to, get it, to get one of those. So the 16M is right over here. Ooh. So 
dude, this thing is gorgeous. It is crazy. Wow. Um, so these are commonly referred to as a Scud, uh, short for Scudiera. Uh -huh. um, these cars are amazing. Um, I don't know the exact figures on how many wow. they made. They did not make very many. Uh -huh. um, this car has 76 miles on it. No way. Yes, so not driven. Not at all. Not at all. Carbon very, fiber mirrors. There were very few options in these cars. So one of the options was you could get a full leather interior, uh -huh. um, or you could get what, what it came with in this in this case is the techno fiber, techno cloth, like a grippy cloth. Yeah. Um, and you're seeing there were 499. So 499. But they aren't numbered, which kind of stinks. So you yeah, don't know what, what number out of 499 was this. Right. If you wanted to pop the bonnet it's yep. in the inside door, look back on the pillar on the other side. Reach okay. inside. We're going to teach you for Yes, later. please. <laughs> there we go. Oh, there, there we are. Go back into the back. Everything Gorgeous. Is carbon fiber. Oh my gosh. Everything. Dude, I love this thing. How much is this thing? This is beautiful. We haven't listed this one yet. We don't know what we're going to ask, to be honest. This may sit inside of the owner's private collection. No way. Yeah, I think that he, he gets sometimes the you know benefits of owning a dealership like this is he gets to pick what he wants. But what if I want this damn thing for my YouTube channel? If you want it, of course, it's all. <laughs> okay. <laughs> this thing is badass, man. I like this thing. It is cool. And it's a, and it's a convertible, which is yes, awesome. Yes. You know I need that. The top goes down. So I can hear my exhaust notes and stuff. And Ferrari exhaust notes are amazing. And, yeah. and not that these are low horsepower, but compared, I think, to the horsepower you're going to want, yeah. um, it's not going to do this. Oh, it's not? Good. Okay. But compared to an Aventador, I think that this has a lot, a lot of look. It does. Uh, a lot of look. But this is also... It, it, because it's yellow, man. Yellow. It's beautiful, bright yellow. It's very yellow. Um, lots of carbon fiber. The cool thing, kind of like yeah. the exhaust exit up top to the Yes. Center. This reminds me of the way that the... Uh, yeah, The, the Pervamante's yep. exhaust is now. I like that. Yep. And carbon fiber diffuser. Dude, I'm Any falling in love. Everything. Right? Yeah. I'm in, I'm in love. Yeah. These cars are cool. And I, I think it's really neat. One of the YouTube viewers knew that this was a 16M. Wow. Uh, but it's not a very popular Ferrari. I mean, it's, yes. it's an amazing Ferrari. Don't get me wrong. I and mean, I think all Ferraris are popular. But not a lot of people know the 16M. It didn't get a lot of hype, I guess would be yes. the word. Not as much as, you know, something with a GTO after it like we just saw um, would get. Yes. Um, definitely not as much as a LaFerrari. Definitely, you know, not as much as you know your older uh, 275, 265 Ferraris. Um, and I think the 430 Scudiera didn't get a lot of a lot of press like it should. I mean, it's an amazing car. Again, more so like a race car. Uh, no carpet in the interior. No sound deadening material. Just raw, raw, loud, fun, um, amazing. And, and this is very similar. Um, again, it's basically the same minus the roof coming off which is a must to me. I agree with you on that. Yes, thank you. I'm glad we, we, we instantly agreed on that. When we first met, I was like, I told you what my goals were, the re one of the reasons why I was getting the supercar, and uh, I wanted to be able to hear it. I wanted to come th resonate through the microphones that I'm using and stuff like that when I'm filming. And a convertible or a Spider or Targa is definitely the way to go for that. I think so. And I think that, you know, I think one of the users also mentioned an LFA. You have another one. You have the white one back there. Well, I didn't see this black the one. white one. That is a very special LFA. And not that all LFAs aren't special. This is a, uh, there are very few of them made every, every, every year. Let's save the LFAs for the next episode because we got these two awesome cars. I, yeah, I, absolutely. I think we can review the LFA. Maybe we'll review the LFA Nuremberg. Maybe the, maybe they can suggest which one they'd like to do. A, a, let's hate to say normal, but a normal LFA yeah. or the Nuremberg LFA. Um, and we can go over this, you know, the, the specials of, of each of them. Um, I think Doug Demuro, as he always does, have a very good job of explaining, you know, shows all the all the quirks of these cars, which yes. there's a few quirks that are kind of weird, like where the drive button's at, where the parking brake's at. Um, I think Lexus, I think the Lexus engineers kind of like threw those in there and like chuckled to themselves, but um, <laughs> it's a beautiful car. Yeah. Nobody can ever say that it's not a, a very sculpted car, um, but definitely not for your... Not for what you want to do. No, not you know, for what I, I think the users are going to agree. It's, well, not for, it's not for what we're going to do. There's no Targa or convertible or anything version of that LFA, is there? No, there's not. And it's okay. such a shame because it is, I think everybody agrees, it is one of the most beautiful sounding supercars out there and V10s out there. That's I, I, I've read that, Arthur, but I haven't heard one in real life. But we're going to hear one next week then. Absolutely. We'll get it. And we'll, we'll Hopefully it'll be dry enough out. Maybe we can do some driving around at least the building so we can get it to rev up and, and hear it because it is, it is beautiful. Not as cool sounding as a Carrera GT, but yeah. it's definitely a beautiful sounding vehicle. Well, that is awesome, man. Well, thank you so much, Arthur, for this week. 
and uh, we'll put our closing in on this one, and then we'll let the viewers decide which one of those LFAs they want for next week. Absolutely. All right. We'll see you guys next Monday. Thanks, man. Thanks, Bye. Arthur. Yeah, what a super cool dude, and what a super cool Ferrari right here. The GTO that we saw earlier was also very nice. Next week, we're going to talk Lexus and LFAs, so definitely stay tuned. If you see something here in their awesome fleet, drop a comment below. Let us know which one you'd like us to see review. And uh, keep in mind that as we get closer to the spring and summer, we will eventually be putting these cars on the road and testing them out. All right. So again, if you're new to the channel, click that subscribe button. If you're already a subscriber, tap that bell so that you can be notified when I upload new content. New videos are always uploaded to the 650 Eve YouTube channel. Stay tuned for more videos. Awesome, awesome Porsches and vehicles in this place. And as always, thanks so much for viewing. We'll catch you next week on Mondays at Marshall Supercar Shopping. I got a tough decision to make relatively soon. We'll catch you next week.